it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for April 2018. So, Virgos, some of you had asked for summer sessions with the astrology learning classes, the 101, and it has been created. I actually have two sessions, an AM and a PM session available in June. All of it is in the description box down below. Click down there, get the details, and I hope to be studying with you very soon. All right, Virgo, so this month, coming into the month, we've had Mercury retrograde in the sign of Aries. Now, it's been in your eighth house, so you have been reevaluating your finances, joint finances, loans, banking, mortgage, taxes. If you share money with a partner, your partner's income, your partner's value, right? All of these things could have really come to the table, debt. Any of these things have been under the view of that very organized, perfectionist nitpicky Virgo radar which has been very good because we have to relook over these areas in order to bring solution to them and in order to move forward I think some other things that have happened during this retrograde Virgo is you answered some questions for yourself about maybe some fears that you have maybe some came to the surface maybe you realize you're starting to outgrow some of them or they're feeling better whatever it is transformation is definitely happening while you re because we're in a retrograde look back relax, recreate, re-edit, um, review, all of these things in this eighth house space. Now, as we're running through this month, right from the beginning of the month on the second, we have Mars, our action planet, in a conjunction. So sharing space, sharing energy with Saturn. Now, sometimes these two get together and can butt heads, but because they're in the sign of Capricorn, and the sign tells us how we're gonna get things done, and Capricorn's not playing around, they're here to achieve. So these two are actually on very good behavior with each other and are helping you to get something done, to move something forward move some of this organization. Now, all of this is actually happening for you with Mars and Saturn in your fifth house. So this could be a space for you where around children, maturity, immaturity, if you have your own business, if you've been thinking about starting your own business or your own company, um, this is giving you energy to be able to do that. It's giving you action. Um, any of those kinds of things, if you do have children, it's helping you take action with them. Maybe you've been having to create different structure or they've been going through something. This helps you there as well. Now between the fourth and the fifth, you're going to experience some energy that I feel definitely splits both days. And that is that Mercury, who's over here retrograde in the eighth house, our deepest, most intimate house, intimacy, right, comes into a square with this Mars-Saturn conjunction. So what this can bring to the table when we're having a square is it's a harder aspect, but a square says, I want your attention now. So it's going to shock us into some kind of action, but what can happen is it feels like angry, depressing conversation, fearful communication, but ultimately what that conversation is trying to do between that eighth house energy and that fifth house energy is say, you have to grow up. We need you to mature. We need you to come to this next place right we need some honesty we need some vulnerability here and whatever it is that square shocks your determination to move towards the goals that you have so you'll you will take action in some way shape or form to move towards it it also because it's the fifth house this um, square may shock your creativity right maybe you uh, you've been stuck you don't know if you want to work for this company more but do I want to start my own maybe this shocks you into movement you create Whatever it is, you will have movement. Now, all of this movement is also really well supported when we get to the 14th and we have Jupiter, who's over here in your third house in Scorpio in a sextile to Pluto, who's over here in Capricorn in your fifth house. Now, when the planets have sex, that's good for us, right? So a sextile says there's a talent or an opportunity here and you will intelligently make use of it. So we know you're taking action here. So somewhere between this communication of creativity, communication with children, communication in some way, shape or form of joy, of pleasure, Play, of any of these things, you're not having to force it. You're not having to fight it. This is a wonderful thing that brings success through positive change, through encouragement, through laughter. And all you have to do is enjoy the delicious energy and show up with a little footwork. Now, when we get to the 15th of the month, we see not only Mercury coming 
out of retrograde and coming direct here in the eighth house but also sharing energy with that new moon that will be happening in aries as well so eighth house is lit up brand new starts brand new beginnings here mercury's out of retrograde things can start to move forward so if you've been waiting to get those taxes done waiting to hear about the loan the mortgage the you know is my partner getting a raise whatever it is things start to push forward now on the 17th, Saturn is going to go retrograde, and on the 22nd, Pluto is going to go retrograde. While these can be more subtle energies, you guys, they are deeply rewarding and important for us to take advantage of, I think. Anytime we get the opportunity to retrograde, we need to enjoy looking back and use it. Now, Saturn's weight has been on us for several months, so first of all, you kind of get an energetic break a little bit, right, which is great, because then it's like, wait, with all the pressure off for a minute, I can think. So instead, you have the opportunity to flip around and re-look at this fifth house, where do you need to create structure? Where do you lack joy? Where do you lack freedom? Where do you lack um, connection with your children, with this new business? Where are these things lacking for you? And how can you clear out these old hurts, these old ideas, these old beliefs, these old necessities, right? Do those things fit your current life? Now you will have five months all the way until September to kind of sort these things out and see what flushes out for you in the wash, but these are rewards clarifying insights you guys don't waste them between that on the 19th we have the Sun moving over to join Venus in Taurus lighting up your ninth house busy we could have some travel we could have some foreign language going on definitely an expansion of faith is happening for you and it is vital because without faith you're not going to take the next leap Virgo you're just not going to do it so good energy on the 24th venus moves on moves into um gemini into your 10th house actually so lots of communications at work could start to happen right you're making decisions um you're picking up on details even at work people you're talking to them and they could just act like you're spitting honey at them it's so delicious whatever it is venus is showing up to bring some harmony to this area and also to up your value take you to that next place to that next level okay now on the 29th, we've got the full moon happening at six degrees of Scorpio in a delicious and positive aspect with the sun Saturn trine that is happening as well. This is kicking off in your third house. So any communications, any writings, if you do something socially, if you're buying something, you're selling something, um, even communications with siblings could really start to take a different tone here. It's a great energy for getting work done, cleaning out, letting go, um, looking down deeper, you know, looking behind why you're communicating the way that you're communicating so you can change it and have a different experience maybe going forward, whether that be writing a book or talking to your family. So it's going to be a good, big, busy month. And I look forward to seeing the things that kind of flush out. And over the next five months, I cannot wait to see the revelations of healing that come to you because you're going to say, oh, I don't need those things anymore. Oh, I have to grow up here. And this needs to look different. So it's all, all for your greatest good. And this month is actually a really wonderful time because you can perfect yourself, Virgo. How great is that? <laughs> all right, guys, I love you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you studying with me in class and I will see you next month. Bye, Virgo.